fat serves multiple functions, most obvious and often only appreciated function being energy storage. Even a lean human has hundreds of thousands of calories stored on their bodies, ready to be used, waiting to be used when needed. Unfortunately, in our environment, that means rarely, uh, most because people eat so often. It also acts as a degree of insulation um, with regards even to heat, and as well as uh, acting as a bit of a cushion. And then as we're really going to talk about next time, it also acts as, uh, as an endocrine organ and produces multiple hormones and signals, dozens of them that then move through the bloodstream and act on various spots of the body. A particular enzyme. Nothing uh, little else will make sense when we talk about fat storage if we don't start with um, a discussion of LPL, which is um, known as lipoprotein lipase. Lipoprotein lipase, anytime you hear that suffix uh, ase, something, something ase, that means it's going to be an enzyme. So lipoprotein lipase has a particular, a unique job because it's primary function is to pull fats off as they circulate through the bloodstream on what's called a triglyceride-rich lipoprotein. Now, that's a term I've used before, but a triglyceride-rich rich lipoprotein is essentially a bus that is moving through the bloodstream that's carrying a bunch of fat. And the passengers on that bus will stop and get off wherever there is lipoprotein lipase. So lipoprotein lipase is like a bus stop for fat. And wherever there is these bus stops or lipoprotein lipase, that is going to be a tissue that is pulling in the fat to be stored. So wherever we have lipoprotein lipase, we have a potential to store fat, a, a high potential to store fat. And of course, where we have more lipoprotein lipase, we will selectively store more fat in that location. Now, lipoprotein lipase can't act alone. Of course, there are signals like insulin that will induce the expression of lipoprotein lipase in particular places. Like, for example, if insulin is elevated, then it is increasing the expression and activity of lipoprotein lipase in fat tissue. When insulin is low, it is reducing the activity of lipoprotein lipase in fat tissue. And in fact, in that same instance, uh, in, like an example of exercise, <clears throat> when a person is undergoing frequent exercise, it's increasing the expression of lipoprotein lipase at muscle tissue because the body is essentially being trained. The muscles are being trained to burn more fat for fuel and to pull that fat in to burn it. It needs lipoprotein lipase again to be pulling in those fats from these triglyceride-rich lipoproteins. And let me just mention what those are. That's going to be things like the chylomicron after it is fat that you've just eaten. It could also be fat uh, lipoprotein, um, lipoproteins that are being produced from the liver. These triglyceride-rich lipoproteins being VLDL and then turning into LDL. So where we store fat is most heavily influenced by where we express the enzyme lipoprotein lipase. Now, one of the, I mentioned the hormone uh, a effector insulin, that's a good example, um, but also in the subtopic now within this broader topic, let's talk about sex because the sex differences between male and female, of course, are, matter enormously. And that is all about sex hormones. Now, you'll notice, of course, we all have noticed, we, we've noticed it in ourselves, um, but in, in children, uh, within our families, that a little boy and a little girl uh, look similar, that their body, overall body shape is generally indistinguishable, of course, other than genitalia. They look the same. Uh, there aren't any substantial differences in their overall frame or the build of the body. But those differences start to manifest themselves as the child, of course, goes through puberty, which is a time of explosive difference and change, uh, much of which, of course, is mediated by an explosive increase in sex hormones. Of course, estrogens primarily being the influence within the females and androgens being the primary influence in males. Now, I'm using those terms because they are reflective of the general 
category of the prototypical female sex hormones being estrogens and the prototypical male sex hormones being androgens. Now within those families, there are more specific influential hormones like testosterone is the poster child of the androgens, even though there are more than just testosterone. Now, unfortunately, we often will say estrogen. There is no hormone called estrogen. It is the estrogens and the main one being estradiol. That's sort of what testosterone is to androgens, estradiol is to the estrogens. But with that brief endocrinology lesson out of the way, these hormones have a powerful influence on the expression of lipoprotein lipase. Let's start with the boy. When a little boy is going through puberty, his testosterone levels climb manifold. Uh, and this will start to increase the expression of lipoprotein lipase in the central abdominal region of his body. Now, that does not mean he begins to only get belly fat because at that same time, testosterone is inducing significant growth of mass, lean mass, bones, muscles. And of course, there's IGF-1, which is a growth hormone kind of derivative and growth hormone itself that are influencing growth. So as much as this boy is now uh, giving the, the hormones are giving rise to the potential to be storing fat around his belly area, that energy is being devoted to growth. So he doesn't have the energy, if you will, to be, well, not if you will, literally, he doesn't have the energy to be storing fat around his abdomen. Unless, of course, there's an excess of energy, which can certainly happen. But usually, as the boy begins to go through puberty, he leans out because all of that energy is being spent and devoted rather to storage to being used to fuel growth of the body itself. Now, however, because testosterone or androgens generally are increasing the expression of lipoprotein lipase in the central area that does include an increased expression in the visceral area. And we will talk explicitly about visceral adipose tissue in a, in a little bit because that matters um, greatly because we store fat differently in the visceral space than we do in the subcutaneous space. So Within the male, uh, there is that potential that when fat storage does start to happen, it's going to happen in a, in a more pathogenic or a more harmful way because storing fat centrally can be problematic. It begins to want to um, restrict its fat storage itself. Um, to, it, it wants to prevent storing too much fat centrally, and that actually has some unfortunate effects. All right, now let's shift over to the girl becoming woman. In that case, of course, she has a significant increase in her estrogens. Now, just as a reminder, both sexes have both sets of these or these two primary um, classes of sex hormones. Males have androgens and estrogens. Females have estrogens and androgens, albeit in a slightly different proportion specifically relatively higher in estrogens. And this relatively higher level of estrogens elicits substantial differences in how little girl's body is storing fat versus little boy's body. Whereas the androgens are inducing the expression of lipoprotein lipase in the central abdominal area of his body, the androgens are inducing the expression of lipoprotein lipase in her body in the distinct female areas like breasts, buttocks and hips. Now, the another contrast then, not only is the location different um, uh, from, from a subcutaneous aspect, but well, it is in fact that in the female instance, it's all subcutaneous. The estrogens are not increasing the expression of lipoprotein lipase in the visceral area, the central area. It's only in this subcutaneous depots. And this is very much why the female can have more fat than a male and, in fact, is by design supposed to. I'll, I'll revisit that in just one second um, and be healthier. It's because she's storing her fat in a subcutaneous depot, and that is a healthy place to get fat. Healthy for reasons we'll get to in just a moment. Um, now, another the, – the, the point that I mentioned that I would revisit <clears throat> is that estrogens – also, in addition to increasing the expression of lipoprotein lipase in these prototypical female fat depots, breasts, buttocks, hips, it also it increases the, the action of storing fat. And this is a unique aspect um, 
because of the sex hormones where she's storing more fat, but at the same time, she is also burning more fat. In fact, it's a pretty substantial increase. But I want to emphasize, as I did in the previous episode, that it, it's this turnover overall that's higher. But even still, the net effect is a body type that is storing more fat more readily. And that is the estrogen. That is an effect of the estrogens. Um, now, there are some obvious benefits to storing fat in the subcutaneous space metabolically, but of course, which I've alluded to, and I'll get to more in detail in a moment, but also just for the sake of reproduction and fertility, it doesn't behoove a woman to be storing fat viscerally if she has the potential to grow a baby in that same visceral space. And so it makes a certain amount of sense um, evolutionarily or by design to not have fat being stored in the visceral space in, in a healthy woman who hopes to reproduce. Because then, of course, there is a physical competition for space. And she wants to devote that space. Her body wants to be able to devote that space to the baby rather than fat tissue. So by storing fat subcutaneously, it moves it, literally moves it all out of the way. Now, what about when a woman is no longer fertile and has gone through menopause? When a female goes through menopause and the ovaries have run out of follicles, there's no more eggs there, then the composition of her ovaries, the cellular composition begins to change and the relative amount and the activity of the very highly active sex hormone producing cells begin to reduce. That's the theca cells and the granulosa cells. She just has fewer of them. And there's relatively just more of other cells that have kind of filled the space. But even still, the ovaries have shrunk because of the loss of this mass of granulosa cells and theca cells, which itself is a product of the loss of follicles because she's not ovulating anymore. So during uh, or, or with menopause and the, uh, and the reduction in estrogens, which very much happens, um, she begins to shift where she stores her fat. And it's not... Uh, it's not uncommon for the woman during menopause to find that she begins to store less fat in the breasts, buttocks, hips, and relatively more in that central region. So it's almost as if she's her body fat pattern storage is starting to default somewhat closer to the males. Now, never completely, thankfully. You know, the body type will still obviously be female. We clearly know that to be the case. Um, but nevertheless, there is a shift 